So I've had several requests on making a video to perform a clean install of Windows 11 inside a preview on a Dell computer. Now, unfortunately, Microsoft haven't officially released a Windows 11 installation ISO. So what we need to do is use the unified update platform, the UUP dump website to download all the Windows 11 setup files and create an installation ISO. So let's just go to uupdump.net and here you can select your channel. So Microsoft have recently announced that they have released Windows 11 to the beta channel build. However, when I have a look at this, I only see Windows 10. So what I'm going to do is select the developer channel and I see the installation ISO Windows 11 build 22000.100 and it's only available in 64-bit because Windows 11 is 64-bit only. So next we'll need to select our language and I'm going to select English United Kingdom. And then we can select next. So to the left hand side, we've got the standard editions and to the right hand side, we should be able to select other editions. So I'm just going to use the default settings, which is download and convert to ISO. And then I'm going to select create download package. So to the right hand side, we see the total download size is 5.36 gigabytes. However, what we're going to download just now is essentially a script file, which we'll execute to download all the files from the unified update platform and then create the installation ISO. So if we go to downloads and just extract the zip file, Okay, so in the extracted folder, we've got a folder called files, and then we've got three scripts. So one's for Linux, one's for the Mac operating system, and the other is for Windows. So let's right click the UUP download windows.cmd and select run as administrator. And this will get blocked by default. So we need to select more information and run anyway. And then we need to accept the user account control prompt after this. So you'll see a command prompt window display. And what it's essentially going to do is download all the files from the unified update platform. Now, if it encounters an error while downloading the files, you'll get an error message at the bottom of the command prompt window. And you'll essentially need to close down the command prompt window and right click the CMD file and run it as administrator again. And it should continue from where it left off and only download the remaining files that it couldn't download before. So if it successfully downloads all the files, it'll go ahead and it'll package them together to create an installation ISO. So you'll be prompted to press zero to exit and the installation ISO is going to appear in the folder. So you see it's called 22.100.100 and so on. So what we can do is double click it to mount it. And if we go to the sources folder, we could directly launch the setup.exe to perform an upgrade install. But what I want to do is perform a clean install, so I'm going to need to make a bootable USB. Now, unfortunately, the install.wim exceeds 4.0 gigabytes, which is the upper file size for the FAT32 file system. And so this means when we use Rufus to create a bootable USB, it will format it as NTFS, and this will be blocked by secure boot which is mandatory for Windows 11. 
So let's copy the install.wim directly to the C drive. And we want to make sure that its attributes are not read only. So right click it and select properties and uncheck read only. So what we're essentially going to use now is a command line utility to split the install.wim file into multiple install.swm files. So once we've done this, we can create a bootable USB and we can copy all the files to the bootable USB that are on the installation ISO, except this install.wim and in its place we use the install.swm files. So I've not created a written guide that corresponds to this installation video yet. However, my Windows 10 installation guide outlines the splitting of the install.wim into multiple install.swm files and creating a UFI bootable USB. And since I'm using a Dell business model and I'm going through all this hassle, what I can actually do is slipstream the Dell driver pack. So let me go to the Dell drivers and downloads website and then select Windows 10 as the operating system because there are no Windows 11 drivers at the time of speaking. So let's select a Dell command deploy driver pack. And if I just highlight the details of this, I see that this is 1.0. 2 gigabytes in size. So this is the full driver pack for this model. So once I've downloaded this driver pack, what I'm actually going to do is use 7-zip to extract it to a folder. So let me just go to the 7-zip website and select 64-bit. And then let's go ahead and install 64-bit 7-zip. So what I want to do is right click the driver cab file and select show more options and then 7 zip and then extract to. Okay, so now I can have a look at the extracted folder. And I'm interested in the Windows 10 drivers. And the 64-bit drivers. So let me just rename this as drivers. And I'm going to copy this once again to the C drive. And now that I've got the install.wim and the drivers folder, what I can do is have a look at the information of the install.wim. So let's right click the start button and select Windows Terminal Admin. And let me just copy and paste this line of code. And I see my install.wim has four indexes and I'm interested in Windows 11 Pro. So if I right click the start button and select system, I see my addition is Windows 11 Pro. And if you're on Windows 10, Windows 10 Pro corresponds to Windows 11 Pro and Windows 10 Home corresponds to Windows 11 Home. So I'm interested in Windows 11 Pro, which is index 3. So I'm going to create a folder called WinTemp and this is going to be directly on the C drive. And I'm going to mount the install.wim index free so that's the windows 11 pro image to this folder so you see program files and windows and so on appear in this folder so once we've mounted windows 11 professional index free of the install.wim to the folder wintemp found on the c drive what we want to do is slipstream all the drivers so let's just copy and paste the next line of code and you'll see then it goes ahead and slipstreams all the drivers to this folder. And in the case of this specific model, it's got 72 drivers. Okay, so now that all the drivers are added, what we can do is commit the changes. So what this essentially does is 
it basically repackages all the contents of this extracted folder back into index free of the install.wim. And then this folder is now empty and we can go ahead and remove it. So we can now have a look at the updated details and we see that the size is larger. Okay, so finally, we can split this into multiple install.swm files, which are less than 4,000 megabytes, i.e. less than 4 gig, and will fit on a FAT32 formatted USB flash drive. So next, we're going to download Rufus and use it to create a blank USB flash drive. So if we load the installation ISA, we see we're locked to an NTFS file system. So we want to select non-bootable and we want the partition scheme to be GPT with a FAT32 file system. So we get these two auto run files on the USB, which we can delete. Okay, so let's grab our mounted ISO and what we're going to do is copy everything from it to the USB flash drive except for the sources folder. So if I press Ctrl and A and then hold down Ctrl and select the sources folder, I'll highlight everything and then I can copy this. And then I can create a new folder called sources on the USB flash drive and I can go to the sources folder on the ISO and press Ctrl and A and then scroll down, get to the install.wim, hold down Ctrl and unselect it. Then copy everything across and in the place of this install.wim file, we're going to copy our two install.swm files. And once these are copied, we have created the UFI bootable USB. So I'm going to insert this into the Dell PC that I want to clean install Windows 11 inside a preview on. And I'm going to power up and press F2 to enter the Dell UFI BIOS setup. And the first thing I'm going to have a look at is the system information. And pay attention to the manufacturer date. So if you don't have a manufacturer date, then your system's likely too old to run Windows. 11. And if your manufacturer date is before late 2015, it's likely too old to run Windows 11. Now, Microsoft at the moment have some pretty hefty system requirements for Windows 11. And they've specified that you need an 8th generation Intel processor or newer. Now, they have received quite a lot of backlash to this and they have stated that they'll probably relax it to 7th generation. However, there's not that much difference between 7th generation and 6th generation, and 6th generation has all the additional system requirements that Microsoft outlined for Windows 11. So I'm going to try the 6th generation processor. So this processor may or may not be supported in the final version of Windows 11, Microsoft are essentially using the Windows 11 Insider Preview to verify what CPUs run efficiently and what ones don't. And the 6th and 7th generation i5 or i7 are going to be better than an 8th generation Celeron in terms of system performance, so my guess is that it will work. So the next thing you're going to want to have a look at is the BIOS version. And then you're going to want to check with your computer manufacturer's website to see if this BIOS version was released before or after mid-2020. So in mid-2020, there was essentially a security exploit found for Secure Boot, which made it totally vulnerable. And in mid-2020, OEM started releasing UFI BIOS updates to patch the security exploit. 
So anything patched after mid-2020 essentially has a patched version of Secure Boot, which is required for Windows 11. And this is generally 6th generation Intel systems and later. 4th generation systems were deemed end of life by Intel and have not been patched for the security exploit. So the next thing we want to do is highlight Secure Boot and make sure that Secure Boot is enabled. And this means if we go to Advanced Boot Options that Enable Legacy Option ROMs is disabled. So now we can go to the boot sequence and I'm only wanting Windows 11. So what I'm going to do is uncheck my bootable USB and delete all old installations. And then this will recheck my UFI bootable USB. And this should be the only thing shown in the boot sequence. So as mentioned, Windows 11 need some additional security features and one of these is a trusted platform module and any sixth generation intel system or later should have one so select tpm 2.0 security and make sure the tpm is on and it's enabled so the next thing we're going to want to consider is the drive that we're going to install windows 11 on and this should essentially be a solid state drive that's large enough in capacity to install Windows 11 on directly. So 128 gigabyte solid state drive or su superior. So go to system configuration and in SATA op operation and make sure it's set to AHCI. And then in drives, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a solid state drive and that it's 128 gigabytes, preferably 256 gigabytes or superior. Now, Windows 10 and Windows 11 system requirements mention that they can be installed on a mechanical drive, but performance is dreadful on a mechanical drive. So you're going to want to avoid this in all cases possible. Okay, so now I'm happy with my UFI BIOS settings. So what I'm actually going to do is expand maintenance and perform a data wipe. So I'll need to select OK at the dialog and then select No at the dialog to cancel. Now I can select Apply and then select OK to save my changes and then exit to exit the Dell UFI by setup. So the computer is now going to reboot and it's going to take us to the screens which will prompt us to begin a Dell data wipe. So if I just press the left arrow and then select continue and then right arrow and select erase and then press enter to continue. So this will wipe all internal SATA drives and in this case it's just an internal solid state drive. Now, my USB flash drive with Windows 11 on it is an external USB device. So this is not going to be touched at all with the Dell Data Wipe. So the Dell Data Wipe will typically take a couple minutes for a solid state drive. Now, if you've got an old clunky mechanical drive installed on your system, it's going to take several hours. And as I mentioned, Windows 11 is going to perform dreadfully on such a drive. So you're better to swap it out. So once it's completed, we can press OK and then the computer will reboot and we'll be informed that the Dell Data White was successful. Now I'm going to power off the Dell and power it on and press F12 to get to the Dell UFI BIOS boot menu. And to the top, we see that the boot mode is set to UFI and secure boot is on. Under UFI boot, we've got our Windows 11 UFI bootable USB, which is selected. So I'm just going to press enter. In some other cases, you're going to need to press the up or down arrow key to highlight it and then select enter. 
Okay, so in the first setup screen, we'll be prompted for our language, our time and currency format, and our keyboard or input method. And the language to install will correspond to the installation ISO that you downloaded. So in the next screen, select install now. And the setup will scan your system's motherboard for a UFI bias embedded system locked pre-installation key. And in this case, this system has a Windows 10 Pro OEM license. So this Windows 10 Pro OEM product key is automatically going to be input and Windows 11 Pro is going to be automatically installed. So once the product keys input will be taken to license agreement screen, select this and then select next and then select custom install and then select your unallocated space on your solid state drive and then select next. So it'll go ahead and copy the Windows setup files to the solid state drive and then it'll prepare them for the installation. And then it's going to install features, install updates, and then it's going to finish rebooting the computer and taking you to the new Windows 11 setup screens. So one thing that I want to note is that there doesn't seem to be any changes in product activation mechanisms between Windows 10 and Windows 11. Now, this means that Windows 8.1, Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys will all work in the exact same manner. Windows 7 keys, which were printed on physical labels, are tied to hardware that's so old that it's probably not going to be able to run Windows 11. And the last hardware that could run Windows 7 was the 6th generation Intel hardware. And all these systems came with Windows 8.1 Pro or 10 Pro OEM licenses with downgrade rights to Windows 7 Pro. So therefore have a UFI bias embedded product key and don't have a printed Windows 7 label. So it's a bit of a grey area when it comes to Windows 7 product keys and Windows 11 because all Windows 7 devices are essentially being phased out. So you'll see the black screen saying getting ready and then it'll reboot and you'll be taken to a black screen with only a mouse cursor for a while. But after a few minutes it should reboot and you should see a black screen saying getting ready and then you should be taken to the new Windows 11 setup screens. Okay, so you're going to be asked for your region and then you're going to be asked for your keyboard layout and then you're going to be asked whether you want another keyboard layout. Next, you'll be asked to connect to the internet. So select your wireless network and then input your password and select connect and then select next. Now it will take some time to check for updates. And after it checks for updates, it will ask you to name your PC. So this is creating your computer name which was oddly missing from the Windows 10 setup screens. Okay, after you input your computer name, it's going to reboot, and then it's going to ask you to set up your account. So I'm going to set up for personal use. And note that a local account is now a Windows 11 Pro feature only. So I've got Windows 11 Pro, and when I select sign in options, I get the option for offline account, which won't show for Windows 11 Home. And even in Windows 11 Pro, I need to select about five setup screens in order to get to the screen that will let me create a local account. So after this, you're going to be asked whether Microsoft can use your location, which is going to be important for maps whether Microsoft can find your device, which is perhaps going to be useful for a laptop. 
they'll be asking for diagnostic information and I'm going to give this because it's an insider preview and I want to help improve Windows. On the next screen, they're going to be asking whether they can use your keystrokes to improve language recognition. So I'm going to decline this. And in most cases, you're going to want to select yes for the tailored experiences regarding diagnostic data, i.e. you're going to get tips that correspond to your device and problems that you've experienced. And in the final screen, you're going to be asked whether apps can share an advertising ID. And in my case, I'm going to select no. So now you're going to be showing the splash screens, which take place when Windows sets up your user account for the first time. And that's it. I'm on the Windows 11 desktop. So as you see, the start screen is slightly different and we're using a essentially a central dock on the taskbar. If I right click the start button to get to the power users menu, I can select device manager and I can see that all my system drivers are installed because I slip streamed the Dell driver pack to the install the WIM file. So if I go to system and about, I see that I've got Windows 11 Pro. And then it's an Optiflex 7040. If I go to Windows Update, I see that I've got several updates to download. So let's go ahead and download these. So there seems to be a nice option to pause updates. And it seems to be less limited than what we've seen with Windows 10 with the option to pause for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks and five weeks. Now, if I try to enroll on the Windows 11 Insider Preview program, it's actually telling me that my system is below the recommended system requirements. And that's because it's got the sixth generation Intel processor. As I mentioned, Microsoft are reviewing this and they relax the system requirements to install the Insider Preview. And more than likely, they'll be relaxed to allow for 6th and 7th generation by the time that Windows 11 is going to be released. Okay, because this is a Windows Insider Preview build, you're best to join the Windows Insider program. So select Get Started and then sign in with your Microsoft account. You'll then be given the option to sign in everywhere using the Microsoft account or only with Microsoft apps. Next, you'll be asked to choose your insider channel and you're recommended to select the beta channel if you want to continue testing the first mainstream Windows 11 build. The developer channel is likely going to move on to the next Windows 11 build or some builds that will have test features that won't actually be released. Okay, so for a sixth generation Intel Dell system, that's a business model such as an Optiplex, Latitude, Precision or XPS, you're going to want to download Dell command update. And for a sixth generation Intel Dell home based model such as an Inspiron, you're going to want to download Dell Update, which is essentially the same application. And once again, because this is a Windows 11 Insider Preview, I'm going to opt to participate in the Dell Command Update Improvement Program. So it's just going to send information across to Dell, informing Dell that particular driver updates are successful or non-successful. So once it's installed, you'll be prompted to restart your computer. And then you can go ahead and launch Dell command update from the start menu. So when we first launch it, we'll be asked whether we want it to automatically run in the background and periodically check for updates. Now, because I slipstreamed the Dell driver pack into my Windows 11 installation media, I don't need to go ahead and install this. I can just check for updates. 
However, if you haven't done this, to the bottom you're going to have the option to click here to download and install a complete driver library. And you should do this on a clean install that doesn't have the Dell driver pack slipstreamed. Because I have the Dell driver pack slipstreamed, I'm just going to select check for updates. And in my case, it just finds four updates. So it's going to go ahead and install these and then we'll be prompted to restart the computer. Okay, so that's my Windows 11 installation up to date with the updated Dell system drivers. So the pre-installed browser on Windows 11 is Microsoft Edge and it's the Chromium based version with the legacy Edge being completely obsolete. Unfortunately, it uses Bing as a search provider. So to the top right, we can select the drop down menu and then settings and then privacy, search and services to the left hand side. And then to the bottom, we can select address bar and search. And we can change the search engine used in the address bar. And we can also change the search box to use the same search engine as the address bar. And when you close and open up Microsoft Edge, it's going to try and coerce you back to using Bing. So select don't apply the recommended settings and you should be okay to use this browser. So what we've installed is Windows 11 Insider Preview on the beta channel. And there will be some bugs and Microsoft are trying to gather as much feedback as possible. So let's just finish up by launching the feedback app and signing into it. So if I just maximize it and select sign in now and sign in with my Microsoft account, once I've signed in, we'll get a link to all the Windows 11 announcements by Microsoft. And we have the option to report a bug or suggest a feature. So let me just think about one of the bugs that I've encountered. Okay, so something that's fairly straightforward is the emoji panel and search within it. So if we open up an application and press Windows and full stop, we'll open up the emoji panel and it's got this search box and the search box doesn't actually find the symbol. It just finds a annoying animated GIF. So let's just summarize the feedback with a descriptive title and then we can explain the problem in more detail. And then it's going to use what you've typed as some keywords and try and suggest a category. So you can change this if it suggests the wrong category. And then you can link this with existing feedback. And sometimes this shows and sometimes it doesn't. Now you've also got the option to leave a recording. So it appears that it does a screen recording, but actually it just takes some snapshots. So let me just start the recording and now stop it. So it's going to take some moments to gather the recorded diagnostic data. And we can view this and we see that it's made 15 screenshots. So after this, we can select submit and our feedback is sent across to Microsoft who will hopefully act upon it.